yes, yes, yes. Oh my god. The key to ship designer is technology. The hull, the weapons and all the other components you will be using in your fleet and surprisingly depends on how well you did on the technological side, bearing in mind for ex each extra technology your fleet lose in size because of less dedicated alloys. More importantly, upkeeping a real fleet is a drain in your economy, and much like RTS such as Starcraft, timing attacks will drastically increase your chances of victory. The first thing to look at in technology is the Hull bonus point. Hull represents your ship's HP. Because those technologies are exclusive to each Hull, it is often important to focus one and discard the rest. Thus, mixed fleets are often a bad idea in the early game. Hull sizes and durability are not only important to keep a ship battling, but also to make them survive unfavorable engagement through disengagement chances. Disengagement chances is a very important aspect of warfare in Stellaris. Ships that fall below 50% HP are more likely to disengage and live to fight another day. Each rule has its own disengagement modifiers, Corvette have 1, destroyers and cruisers have 1.5, and battleships have 1.25. The hit and run policy, the trickster admiral, and fighting in friendly systems also positively affect the chances of disengagement. A disengaged ship is a ship you won't have to rebuild, so it's very important. Larger hull on top of having their own modifiers have more opportunity to disengage below 50% HP since they have more HP. Especially against small weapons and is further increased by the crystal plating text, a very cost efficient alternative to armor. The two other durability bar on a ships are represented by armor and shields. Shields require power and are thus limited on ships, but they are both cheaper in base cost and upkeep and can regenerate. They also cut out the meta's most dangerous weapons. Armor is the exact contrary. It's expensive and weak to a lot of things. It is also outclassed by crystal platings as mentioned earlier, a much cheaper alternative that is either considered tier 4 armor or tier 6 depending on whichever you use and it increases your disengagement chances and also has more rounded weaknesses. Current meta favors ships with larger hull and hard hitting long range weapons that are capable of hitting their target. Range and tracking are very important aspect of warfare and unfortunately the automated design will often address them poorly. I will cover more specifically all the weapons in a different video, but for this video, try to use your strongest and most up-to-date weapons and roughly the same amount of energy and kinetic weaponry, and try to stay true to what I'm using most of the time in the following examples. Small weapons are widely avoided for their high chances of triggering disengagement, and their very high tracking that often cause overkill on ships. Medium weapons are preferred over small weaponry in most scenarios, since they hit harder, they decrease the chances of disengagement of both corvettes and destroyers, and their tracking of 20 to 30 is often offset by tracking computers and sensors. Gated weapons are, so to speak, an enhanced medium weapon with shield ignoring capabilities. Well, that was a mouthful. They have high range and accuracy but low tracking, and are rather slow weapons. The trick here is that guided weapons can be cancelled by other weapons such as angers and point defense, but are otherwise quite decent at preventing disengagement. The way they implemented in the game can best be described as clunky. Because they are slow, they do not interrupt the enemy volley and thus you still lose ships. The only reliable usage is on corvettes, and we'll see why later why it's a problem. Point defense are mostly early game feature, used to repel missiles and angers early threats. But the keyword here is early, as they are so absolutely outclassed by angers it's not rare to see the slot just empty later on. Angers are momentum based weapons, 
their superior PD, as mentioned earlier. And for the full DPS to be unleashed, they require longer fights and proper execution. They are mostly a PV or defense focused weapons for the high disengagement proc, which is bad against players. Large weapon has two absurd weapon family, the launcher and the battery line. Although regular large weapon achieve good results against destroyers and award, those exclusive large weapons storm the game by the genuine power spike they give, and even then, the launcher line is superior to its battery counterpart. Its DPS might be slightly lower, but its lower fire rate means harder shots that are usually enough to turn the tide of a battle in one volley. And yeah, forget about disengagement chances at this stage of the game. Those weapons hit so hard that they basically nullify it around like year 50 to 60. In most scenarios. Finally, XL weaponry are essentially mandatory. They exclusive to battleships and you should just use them. Before we introduce each level size, uh, we're going to talk a bit about PvE. So I guess PvE, much like automated design, it is worth noting that the AI directly undervalued disengagement chances and tracking. We also use a lot of mixed fleets and assist on covert swarm in the early game, as they are unable to replace them for more resilient hull. And for auxiliary components, well, most of the games are not worth the tech alloy investment, so I find myself to mostly use shield capacitor, auxiliary computer, and generator booster. Now we'll talk about hull. The first hull we'll talk about is covets. They've been grossly overrated since the naked covets time, and it does appear them that their only strengths rely in guided weapon, which is an un unreliable damage source. They can fit more guided weapons than cruisers, but that makes them more expensive, as covets lack in range and survivability. Personally, my usage of covets is for very early pushes, using some PD in the mix to negate outpost DPS, and not using guided weapons in the very early game, since both players and AIs are likely to counter that. Then again, Torpedo is a fairly cheap tech, but it's bad at targeting smaller ships such as Corvettes. It can target pretty reliably destroyers, but it's, it's easily countered. Corvettes do make for very good large weapon dummy, since they're the first one to enter range with enemy ships, and that's one of their prime role in the later stage of the game. And since the economy changes of 3.0, they have a much better matchup against destroyers because more important injury tech were introduced, such as the enhanced alloy foundries. Thrusters are also very important on corvettes, but unfortunately thrusters have low weight if you do not unlock a larger hull. So about destroyers. The destroyer's purpose in life is to squash the early game in both PV and PvP and live to tell the tale till the end game when he'll mount a nice shiny launcher with a ribbon. The destroyer's strength can be declined in three main attributes and mostly shine between 20, the 20th to the 40th years in the game. Its hull, 100 more per naval capacity than covets, is very important and allows him to disengage quite easily. Its ability to use both medium and large weapons as well as picket computers make shock work of defense starbase in the early game and other destroyers and it allows alpha strike which work great with the hit and run tactic. It's a very good compromise with cruisers as they are cheaper tech-wise. Cruisers? Well, there are two main types of cruisers. One is essentially a scaled-up destroyer and the other is Anger 1. Picket Cruiser has the same function as Destroyers, but it is tankier, it is more expensive tech-wise. The Anger 1 is more axed around PvE than PvP, as it has some glaring weaknesses that anyone noticing the threat would exploit. In PvE, however, Anger Cruiser are very efficient, 
and we safely tear down Stabes and Emperor Pearl Fleet. I made a whole video about it, so... But I need to make some finishing on it. Battleships are the backbone of any proper fleet. The DPS output and range makes the overhaul pale in comparison, and they really get them to support slash cheesy tactics. Battleships fights are extremely volatile, and unlike the previous three, they usually end in one-sided victory. This ship can only ever realistically be skipped if your opposition somehow never went past destroyers. And even then you probably still want to pick it. The only weakness lie in the lack of tracking, which is hardly exploitable assuming you didn't waste your early destroyers and cruisers. Rushing battleship is usually a bad idea in most cases, as cruisers basically handle much better early game threats than battleships do thanks to their picket computer, which battleships don't have. Finally, Titans are expensive and they can die easily to lose volley, but they do procure some pretty good auras, namely the shield and the fire rate auras. Voila, see ya for part 2. BIG IS BEST!